Let's continue down the rabbit hole into this story with Dr. John D. I thank you for watching. Occultist Magicians Dr. John D. John D. began to collect a secret library of occult books, extremely obscure ones, thanks to his job of being the advisor of Queen Elizabeth I, so I'm sure he had a huge budget to buy the most expensive, rarest books out there. John D. acquires a book called The Steganographia. This is a stumbling block that John D. discovered that he had. He picks up this book, which is a grimoire designed to summon entities, summon angels, summon spirits, to aid you in teaching you the secrets of the universe. John D. had the greatest collection of occult books in the entire country, if not the entire world. Sadly, his book collection was taken and scattered and probably most of it destroyed. But before that happened, John D. met someone named Edward Kelly. Edward Kelly happened to be a medium. He was adept and very astute and had the gift, had the ability to communicate with spirits, had the ability to summon spirits. And this is something John D. really wanted. And so they became partners. But Edward Kelly wasn't just a medium, he wasn't just a psychic. He was most definitely a diehard occultist, a black magician, a necromancer, and an alchemist. Edward Kelly seemed to be more uh, worldly in the fact that he really sought to turn lead into gold or to create gold from non-gold through alchemy. And he sought that for many, many years. But he meets up with John D. John D. asks him to read this steganographer and some of these angels and learn the secrets of the universe for many months, months on end, in shifts perhaps 10, 11, 12 hours long. John D. writes down what Edward Kelly is receiving through a crystal ball or through a shoe stone. This shoe stone is a famous shoe stone that Dr. D had. It was a slab of obsidian and even William Shakespeare commented on it. And let's see what William Shakespeare had to say about it. One of the ways of accessing spirits in the 16th century is here in a case in the British Museum, and I'm looking at it now. It's a large round disc of highly polished black stone. It's a mirror and said to have belonged to one of the world's most famous practitioners of the occult arts, Dr. John D. Looking at it, it strikes you as oddly potent, and I'm almost nervous to pick it up. It's smooth, it's gleaming, and I can see my reflection in it very clearly. It's made of obsidian, a black volcanic glass. It looks like something modern and industrial, but in fact it's well over 500 years old. This very day, Dr. John Dee's magical equipment, including the shoe stone, the obsidian scrying slab mirror, basically a black mirror, which is a very common instrument among black magicians and sorcerers alike, is actually at the British Museum right now. It had a special case, and that special case has woodcuts. It is the actual shoe stone of Dr. John D. The shoe stone wouldn't work without Edward Kelly. Edward Kelly was the magician that had the invocation abilities, that had the medium abilities to summon the entities. Without Edward Kelly, the shoe stone is just a rock with a reflection that didn't do anything. Thanks to Dr. D, he pushed Edward Kelly to the point where the spirits communicated and gave a warning. The main spirit that appeared, now there were 70 individual spirits that appeared to Dr. D and Edward Kelly. 70 individual spirits, angels supposedly. They claimed to be angels, but some of the spirits looked angelic and some of them looked gruesome 
and disgusting, and they look like monsters, demonic monsters. Some of them look like humans, and the most common one that would come was named Medini. Medini presented herself as a common medieval maiden. This episode is more about history, and historically, Medini, people today would say she didn't exist, and that the communication wasn't real. Dr. John Dee convinced Queen Elizabeth I, and he didn't need to convince her, but Edward Kelly and Dr. John Dee being the most famous occult partners in history, something did happen, they did communicate with something, and that something warned them to go to Poland as they were going to be attacked and that a sabotage plan was in the works. Medini gave this warning and said the following. The Lord Treasurer and he are joined together and they hate thee. I heard them when they both said thou wouldst go mad shortly. Whatsoever they can do against thee, assure thyself so. They will shortly lay a bait for thee, but assure them. Lord have mercy upon me. What bait? And by whom? They have determined to search thy house, but they stay until the duke be gone. What would they search it for? They hate the duke unto death. And why? Take heed that you deal uprightly. But will they enter to search my house or no? Immediately after the duke is going, they will. To what intent? What do they hope to find? They suspect the duke is inwardly a traitor. They can by no means charge me, not so much as of a traitorous thought. This warning from Medina was the first that this spirit gave to Dr. John D. and Edward Kelly. It was direct communication of what was going on behind the scenes. There was a sabotage in the works. A raid was in the works. There was literally no way they could have been tipped off other than through this spirit entity. She promised Dr. John D. that if they fled to Poland, she would continue to reveal even greater secrets than what she had already revealed. Great secrets which became the Enochian alphabet, supposedly the angelic language. Dr. John Dee always sought higher knowledge and prized higher knowledge above anything else. And so this was something John Dee was willing to die for, to get this information. He was a very driven individual that wanted to unlock the secrets of the universe. He believed Medina and Edward Kelly believed Medina so thoroughly that they immediately got their families together in wagons and went to Poland. And the very next day, a raid took place on John Dee's residence in Mortlake, England, just as the spirit said would happen. The books were confiscated, and to be honest, we don't know what happened to them, but I'm sure Dr. John Dee kept his favorites, and most definitely the most prized among were the logs, the recordings between the spirits and Dr. John D. through Edward Kelly. So they get to Poland, and uh, that's where things get interesting, even more so than this. But I want to talk about black mirrors real quick. This is a black mirror, and uh, I've never used it. Uh, I'm not a practicing occultist. I'm an anti-occultist that just happens to be interested in researching occultism. So I am an occult researcher, but I'm an occult researcher that has never practiced any of this stuff. Why do I believe it? Because I'm just an innocent bystander from my perspective that uh, has firsthand witnessed poltergeist activity for six months straight, every single day for six months straight. If you experience that, you too would be a believer in spirits in an invisible realm. For hundreds if not thousands of years, magicians have been using black mirrors to communicate with spirits. I highly recommend you don't do this. 
I highly recommend you stay away from stuff, stuff like this. Uh, if a Ouija board would be considered freaky or scary or not too safe, a black mirror would be a million times worse than a Ouija board. We're talking an extreme Ouija board of extreme proportions that could open up doors of any type of negative entity to enter your life. I do not recommend ever using one of these. Now, where did I get this? See, I collect records, and so it's the size of a record, and I, I, I didn't know what it was. I picked it up at a Goodwill for 79 cents a pound, so this thing cost me a couple dollars, literally, probably a dollar fifty or something, and uh, I thought it was cool, but after a while, you know, I realized it's like a piece of plastic, like lucite. It's like smoky lucite. It looks like some vintage smoky lucite, and it's hand machined to be round, and I believe it's very possible this is a black mirror previously owned by a black magic practitioner, unless he was a table cover for some obscure custom-made table. Who knows, but... I thought it was cool, so I have it, but I'm never going to use it. How do I know this works? Concerning black mirrors, uh, you have to be a medium for it to work. Edward Kelly was a legitimate medium. Edward Kelly had the ability to call the entity, and the entity would appear. And I'm not going to give the exact details on how that happens, because I don't want to teach people how to do something I just said is extremely dangerous, that opens up doorways to extreme negative entities in your life that probably never stop bothering you the rest of your life. So going down the rabbit hole, Alice's rabbit hole, uh, is an understatement. You could go into realms so far out there that, let's face it, mainstream anybody are, are going to call you crazy. It's a risk I wouldn't take if I was you, but uh, Edward Kelly was a black magic practitioner. He knew how these worked. Edward Kelly used Dr. John Dee's obsidian shoe stone, which was reportedly 500 years old at the time of Shakespeare visiting it. So it was an extremely old, perhaps thousand year old black mirror, supposedly some type of Native American Indian mirror. And perhaps it did come over on one of the earliest visits to the South Americas. The reason I believe this is evidence is because black mirrors have been used for hundreds if not thousands of years. They work. They certified work, guaranteed, to a certain number, a certain percentage of mediums. There are so many fraud charlatan mediums out there claiming to have communication with spirits, and I'm not here to say which ones are legitimate today. But I would say Dr. John Dee's friend, Edward Kelly, most definitely was a legitimate medium. So they're kind of few and far between. I would say there are as many mediums that are legitimate today as were in Dr. Dee's time. A handful here and there, who knows? Maybe 1% of the population have the ability, the mediumship abilities, to communicate with spirits using this. So if you get one of these and you try it and it doesn't work, it means you're lucky enough to not be a medium, but I would not try it. I would say the fact that I was haunted by a poltergeist for six months, perhaps I have some type of abilities. Purposely I'm not using them, I have no desire to do such, because I know about the negative results from watching others. If an innocent bystander can be harassed for six months by negative entities, someone that welcomes that into their life can be harassed for a lot longer than six months, perhaps the rest of their life. It's not something I would risk, but let's continue on on what happened and the secrets revealed from the spirit claiming to be Medini between Dr. John Dee and Edward Kelly. Now, Edward Kelly saw and heard the spirit in the black mirror, the shoe stone. Dr. John D. was a rare medium and could see through a crystal ball 
could see spirits on his own before he ever met Edward Kelly. So Dr. John Dee definitely did have this scrying ability. It's usually referred to as scrying. Crystal mancy is a fancy term for it. Dr. John Dee definitely had a smoky quartz crystal ball. Dr. John Dee wrote in his journal that he first saw a spirit in his crystal ball on May 25th, 1581. So why didn't John D. see Medini, the spirit, as Edward Kelly was receiving the information and talking directly to practically a TV screen? The reason two people aren't going to see the same thing in a spiritual ceremony like this, the setting is going to be in a dark setting with candles, the participants literally need to be in a trance-like state. It's just the nature of these spiritual communications. Even if there's 10, 20, 30, 40, 50 people there, it's going to be rare that two people see the same thing. If two people see the same spirit talking, then they are allowed to see it, chosen, or they're natural spirit mediums. But Dr. John D., there's some type of separation. There's, there's a separation that happens. I guess he had to have faith that he was happening. What Ladini told Edward Kelly and what John D. wrote down is far too detailed, far too accurate, far too useful, and far too above and beyond anything Edward Kelly could have made up. Edward Kelly was not the greatest improv artist in the world. We're talking for Edward Kelly to be as brilliant as someone that could make up every transcript. He would have to be Shakespeare, Robin Williams combined, just an extremely brilliant person. For someone that sought the Philosopher's Stone his whole life, sought to turn lead into gold his whole life, I seriously doubt he's gonna be able to come up with all of this transcript information. During a ceremony, two people are likely gonna see different things and it's very likely one is going to see nothing while the other one sees something. And uh, I guess if two people are in the exact same state, a gamma theta state, frequency, a certain vibration, a certain mindset, and they're in a certain trance-like state, they're going to have a, a more clear ability to see and communicate. As far as writing something down, you have to use a little more logical faculties. So John D. was probably fully wide awake and fully logically writing down everything while Edward Kelly is in a trance-like state communicating and repeating what he hears. I personally believe the story is 100% true. A lot of modern-day atheists are going to say that it's simply the psyche. You know, the subconscious can do some amazing things, but I don't think the average human can get information great distances just randomly pop into their head without an external force. So Edward Kelly and John D. go to Poland. When they're in Poland, Medini tells them to present to the King of Poland the idea that he needs Edward Kelly and John D.'s help in exercising him of his demon that are going to ruin his reign as king, and that once these demons are out of his sight, he will be the strongest and greatest king of all time. And that's basically just blowing smoke up the king's butt. He does not believe this story, but he's intrigued. And I looked at the king's, his Wikipedia, and he happened to be an occultist. He happened to be extremely interested in the occult. And he, at this point, already knows who John D. is, because John D. is one of the most famous crystal gazers, scryers, not to mention astrologer. And so he really wants to put John D. to work for him. So the King of Poland give John D. and Edward Kelly their own space to work, even though he doesn't want them to exercise his demons. And at this point, Medini keeps her promise, and through the Black Mirror process, reveals to Edward Kelly 
the language of the angels. Supposedly the language that Adam spoke that was corrupted and eventually became Hebrew. Hebrew is one of the most ancient languages. Whether it actually is an angelic language, I don't know. I don't claim to know. But supposedly linguistic experts have said it phonetically and linguistically is a sound language that does work. But just because it's a language that does work, it doesn't mean it couldn't have been theoretically made up. I would say Edward Kelly would have had to have been as genius as Shakespeare, Robin Williams, and J.R.R. Tolkien, the inventor of the Lord of the Rings, who came up with a phonetically usable elf language, and I believe other languages. I'm not, a, I'm not the biggest Lord of the Rings fan, but I believe he came up with two languages the alphabets and the pronunciations of the words and they work and if you've seen the movies you've seen the actors had to memorize non-existent fictional language that is proof that humans can come up with complex phonetically usable with their own independent alphabet languages it is possible but in this case I'm gonna go with the less likely scenario that an entity, a spirit entity, did reveal to Edward Kelly and John Dee an actual unknown language. Whether that language was made up by the spirits or is used by the spirits, it's possible. I don't believe it was the original angelic language. I believe it uh, is some type of lost language that the spirits cataloged and they gave to John Dee knowing that there's no source to prove it, claiming it's something that it's not. It very much reminds me of the language that spirits are giving to a modern day black magician known as E.A. Coetting. Now, a lot of people are going to say E.A. Coetting is, is a this or that, but I follow his channel. I watch every one of his videos because there's something there. Even though people are making fun of it and saying it's a meme, uh, even though people think it's strictly adult entertainment, I would say there's something there. And I would say uh, the language EA has been shown by these entities is a lost language that can't be proven, really. And it's the type of language an entity is going to reveal to someone if they have some type of trust between that person. Will those languages ever help us? It's hard to say. Uh, I would say it's not worth contacting entities. It's not worth getting any information from them because from my experience, from what I've read, I've read many books on the subject, I would say they seem to always fail you when you need them the most in the end. And they seem to always mix truth with lies enough truth for you to believe them till you find out it's too late they lied i read a, a blog from one magician who straight up asked an entity that's supposedly an expert at mining for gold mining for gems and treasures and lost hidden secret treasures and the entity straight up said nope i'm not going to share nothing with you dig it up yourself sucker." So they, these entities seem to have a very rude attitude. They have zero respect for humans. I think they only pretend to have respect. There's a comment someone said, why do you say these entities are smarter than us? Everyone assumes they're smarter than us. And then that comment later said they've just been around forever and they've got the intelligence from us. And uh, that's an interesting comment. I would definitely agree that these entities have been around forever. Thousands, if not hundreds of thousands, if not millions, if not billions, if not trillions of years. They say the universe is only something billion years old or whatever. I think these entities have been around since the beginning, since the beginning of time, and they've observed us, humans, since the beginning of time. So they literally have a, a record of every language ever made. They can fluently speak, read, and write in every language ever made. And uh, they are geniuses because they're kind of like vampires. They can observe humans and uh, adapt and uh, they know everything that humans have ever known in the history of mankind. But they don't know everything. 
They don't know everything that's going to happen in the future, but they do have a window of the future. So I believe that entity did have a window and could see that John D's house on Mortlake was going to be raided. So they do have a window of a couple days, if not a week or two. And the farther out, the blurrier it gets, which is why I think personally few people win the lottery with the help of any magic because of that blurry line, not to mention random numbers. But if some guys have been plotting to raid your house for a couple weeks, the entities are going to know it. Eavesdropping, surveillance, they're everywhere. There's a theory from a guy claiming the Earth is comprised of two Earths, vibrating at different frequencies. This Earth probably vibrating at a low frequency, and the Spirit Earth, or whatever the other Earth is, vibrating at a high frequency. I'd say that's a pretty good analogy of this invisible world where these entities live. They seem to walk on the same ground that we walk on, except for a little bit, which is why you'll see some ghosts levitating. Perhaps they're not levitating. Perhaps their earth that they're walking on is simply a little bit off, a little bit higher, a little bit bigger, landscaped a little bit differently. Stay tuned for part three. Thank you for watching. I thank you for subscribing. This has been John Rasmus with Occult Unmasked with the John Rasmus channel. Be seeing you.